Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Pierre, and joining me as always is Tim. I uh, can't think of anything clever for this one. I lured him in with some crumbs, some cake crumbs. Uh, mm. Welcome okay. to the show. This is a horror movie podcast. Every week, or sometimes more than once a week, but every episode, uh, we get together, we watch a movie, and then we talk about it. Bada bang, bada boo. It's that simple. Uh, so, <laughs> see, boo, because mm-hmm. scary ghosts. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> just, just, just to make sure, just make sure. So, this episode, we are going to be talking about Gretel and Hansel, which is a 2020 release. So, we got another new, new one here to talk about. And this uh, came out in like january but a very limited release uh d- depending on where you were it was hard to get to uh finally we have a chance here to sit down and talk about it uh directed by osgood perkins uh who of course we saw uh previously black yeah, with black coat's daughter which was February. which was very good i liked uh that movie quite a bit so mm-hmm. i uh yeah i wasn't <laughs> as hot on it <laughs> you weren't as hot on it so which is interesting because I'm really curious to see how this this goes for you then. Uh, so obviously mm-hmm. Gretel and Hansel, if the title wasn't uh, a giveaway, is a new take on Hansel and Gretel. And mm-hmm. uh, stars Sophia Lillis, who was in It, chapters 1 and 2. Probably too much of 2, given that the kids didn't need to be seen again. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. she she's there. Uh, she plays plays Gretel, the titular Gretel. And mm-hmm. her and her little They're, brother... Like- I mean, there had to have been, like, some, like, angry men's rights people, like, <laughs> releasing YouTube videos about how, like, uh, like oh, like, you yeah, are the taking Hansel out of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they want to focus on Gretel, let them focus on Gretel, all right? Yeah. How, how many times has Hansel and Gretel been told over the eons of time? Like, <laughs> it's okay to flip it around, all right? It's all yeah. right. <laughs> So, yeah, so we're going to talk about, we'll start spoiler-free, as we always do. We'll give you warning before we jump out of spoilers. So, here we go. Uh, so, I it was, I mean, outside of the broadest strokes, I actually wasn't that familiar with Hansel and Gretel. Like, I mean, outside of, there's a witch in the woods who mm-hmm. lures in children, fans them up so they can eat, so she can eat them, right? That's the, Han, <laughs> that's Hansel and Gretel. But mm-hmm. outside of what I just said, I didn't really know much about Hansel and Gretel as a, as a thing. So, this movie takes a very more highbrow artistic approach to this uh, it's shot in 1661 so it's got, even the aspect ratio is uh, an odd choice i suspect that may have been to do with the height of the trees and wanting to really give a shape to the forest uh, all that said the opening prologue scene is actually the complete opposite it's shot in like 2.55 to 1 it's like ultra wide so uh you notice the changing, right? I mean, if you don't notice the, the specific things, you notice that changes drastically from the opening scene to the rest of it, right? Sure, of course. <laughs> as as uh, noting down, like, oh, this is a one one, what two five thing, <laughs> and then oh, now it's three eight six nine. <laughs> you test me, <laughs> brother Tim. You test me so. So this is. It's that is obviously with Gretel at the forefront. It's a bit more of a dare I say a feminist focus on mm-hmm. on the story and uh, the themes that it's playing with and kind of like pokes at throughout the the movie kind of veers towards that side of things. When we'll, we'll talk about that as we get to, especially in spoilers, we'll talk about it. But that is the idea. So it's a simple story of these two kids being kind of thrown out by their mother and looking for for shelter looking for work and ending up at this house in the woods which is you know not to spoil things too much but there may be a witch in the, in the house because that's <laughs> the story of hansley grill <laughs> so tim i shall yeah. ask you the question how did you feel about gretel and hansel uh you know i was pretty excited going in i was like ooh, you know i love my evil fairy tales and we got ooh, we got two in a row hell yeah because um, you know, last week we did Rumble Stiltskin, and then you know, the, the, the... <laughs> so I was pretty excited. I was, I was like, "Oh, maybe we got another rump on our hands. It's gonna be fun." And <laughs> <clears throat> and unfortunately, I was pretty disappointed. Um, I yeah, because I, I I know like a lot of people really like um Black Coat's daughter. Uh, it didn't really do it for me but i do think Oz, uh, osgood perkins 
is like an interesting director and i do think he he can create really cool imagery and I, I think the big thing that i will compliment this movie is i think there's like a lot of cool images like you know that i liked in it um but unfortunately i thought it was just boring <laughs> like for the most part um there is some cool stuff in here um it, it's very pretty to look at um but yeah i mean ultimately I, I wasn't that crazy about it it's not the worst thing in the world but yeah it really didn't do much for me <laughs> maybe maybe we will be in for another romp you said that you said that as if that's what you were looking for <laughs> and i am delighted to say that i was looking for the opposite of another romp i was looking for a good movie and i loved this movie grell and hansel was fantastic fan okay fantastic <laughs> i cannot be more opposed to your views on this if i tried <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I, mean, I guess if you like being bored, <laughs> sure. It wasn't bored. This was the, one of the most engrossing movies we've watched in ages. This is one of the best movies we've watched in a while. I okay. I <laughs> this was fantastic. The the uh, the cinematography you mentioned that it had some good images. Yes, this movie was gorgeous mm. from start to finish. Every single frame of this mm. thing was like a painting. It was tremendous. It was beautiful, mm. hauntingly beautiful. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with you on that. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> right, I could cross that off the the, the shit list. But uh, I, you know, I I, I like the, uh, the the tone, the atmosphere, the mood. Uh, I I found it to be very engrossing. I thought uh, Sophia Lillis was very strong in the lead role, mm. and uh, the, the the only critique I'd have maybe of the acting would be that it felt like every so often there'd be an attempt at doing an accent, but for the most part mm. there wasn't one. <laughs> it was like what. what so what was with that one Irish line? Don't 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 do your one little Irish line. Just <laughs> just stick to your accent. It's fine, uh, and it worked. I I, I like the the awkward silence between beats. Every, every, when they, they do meet uh, the, the you know the witch. If you you know if you want to just call her that. Mm -hmm. Um, like I I kind of love the the way she interacted with them. The 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 awkward beats of the 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 inter you know the, the awkward beats of the. Just the, the tension in the room, the the uh, the surreal nature to it, uh, the visuals. I I I I I thought this was nigh on perfect. So I, I I don't I don't I don't know where our, our number one rump fan is coming from with this one. I can only I can only assume that Tim was dropped in his head as a child repeatedly. <laughs> uh maybe 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 maybe, he's, maybe your parents tried to use you to cut down a tree kind of like uh hansel and this with the, the little axe <laughs> and it didn't go very well but your head sustained much damage that's the only that's the only reason i can give the explanation that's the only thing i can think of i mean well it's like you know you're, you're saying every frame looks like a painting uh which is great except for it's not a painting it's like it's a very beautiful looking movie where with just long stretches of like nothing happening and like you're saying like yeah there's all these like awkward pauses and stuff like i hate these movies where you know everyone always talks in like the same volume of voice and it's always just like this and they're always just talking back and forth and i'm just like oh god like uh, you know she's a witch <laughs> you know do something crazy like let's get a let, let's like you know start having stuff happen here and uh, is i just is really having trouble paying attention <laughs> to this movie you despite how like good it looked <laughs> you uncivilized swine <laughs> the, the, you can't see you, nothing happens what are you talking about every, every <laughs> single scene of this movie was consistently like active it was consistently stuff going on there was always something happening there was there's this engaging the entire time there's like no. yes yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> the way the characters are played off of each other the 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 the, the conversation to have the narration I, I like the narration a lot actually I, I thought that worked really well uh no, everything about it right from the start with the awkward meeting because the, the opening outside of the the prologue scene that sort of you know says a backstory for the for the witch uh there's it's uh gretel going to this this job interview uh, to be a, a maid at this rich guy's house and he's this creepy old man and it's the, the way it's shot very starkly this just very just kind of like wide shot of him sitting in his chair 
and like asking her these questions and the awkward pauses afterwards like no i, I thought that's, that's built up a perfect atmosphere the, the, the way it was kind of like constructed it's it's feeling the obviously he's very sleazy he's kind of you know, he's, he ultimately asks if she's i mean doesn't just say are you a virgin he's, he says like you know how have you remained intact yeah uh, very <laughs> and, very slightly and she you know she's you know we see her it sort of cuts to her running away kind of like in the rain offended by this and like wishing she'd hit him kind of thing and like the movie is very much about that it's, it's about her her temptation and wanting to have more control and more more of her own uh destiny in her own hands essentially mm-hmm. and yeah yeah I, I do like that angle of um yeah like the you know, like like a lot of people, and like you were saying, like I think you know most people are familiar with the beats of the story, um, but yeah, no one knows like kind of like the finer details. And I do like the idea of um, having more of a, like a feminist angle on it, uh, and you know, telling it more from Gretel's point of view. Like that stuff, I I do think was cool and interesting. I just you know wish maybe the film I don't know did more. <laughs> It does plenty, <laughs> Tim. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. You, you can't appreciate a nice slow burn with atmosphere. I'm so sorry, Tim. Right? Oh, I love plenty of slow burn movies. It's just, you know, they're done better and, and more oh. interesting. And yeah, the, this one just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> this is maddening. I the like I I thought even how it's it's it scares extremely well like you know it would do that thing where there would just be something in the frame there'd be no loud jump noise or anything like that like it would just cut to a shot and there'd be something in the background or or stuff like that there's some wonderful moments like that throughout uh but like i say it looks stunning the visuals are definitely number one on the list but the i i think the the music's very good I, i love how it seems to transition from like sort of an older style with strings and emotion to sometimes straight up synthesize stuff uh, later on as the movie progresses and i think gretel's journey and her temptation because it's interesting you know the witch kind of like tempts the you know t- tempts hansel with food right it's like here's cake here's <laughs> things to eat and that's basically all he he needs uh whereas gretel's not convinced and gretel being convinced or being tempted by the witch is more to do with power it's more to do with being in control of who she is and you know, there, there's references throughout of, you know, the huntsman who they meet briefly, um, you know, even says she has to be careful because, you know, men might think of a use for her that's something she doesn't want. And the witch kind of implies that too. And obviously with the scene at the start kind of like puts her in that situation. It's a constant sort of threat kind of hanging over her head, this weight of what the world's going to expect of her. And this idea of her having power to not need to do that, to not have to be a part of that uh, is the ultimate temptation for her. And even though it goes wherever it goes and choices are made that are made, there's still elements there that that's still a factor of her character and why she makes the choices she does. And I, I think there's a, a really good character story at the center of this. And I don't think there's a moment wasted in building that. But you know what? Fine. <laughs> Fine. Do, do, uh, do you know the problem is, Tim? See when, see when I don't like a movie and you do... It's always some really dumb movie, so you can just sit there and crack jokes. When I have to do this, I actually have to sit and, like, I don't know, talk about cinema, right? <laughs> I'm talking about cinema, which is something that Tim has struggles with, but I- I'm talking about cinema. Tim's over there talking hey. about rumps on motorbikes. <laughs> I mean, I, I said this before. I, I never, I've, I haven't taken any film classes. I didn't go to school for uh motion pictures or whatever I, i'm just a, a simple man uh who knows what he likes so you know take that with a grain of salt you don't have to uh but i mean uh you know, I, I never claimed to be a, a film critic or, or whatever so uh but what i mean i think osgood perkins it's he's he's very strange because there are some there are certain creators where i just don't like their stuff and i think they're bad He's a very interesting guy where I think like he's very talented and is able to do some stuff that uh, I think is really cool and and I really appreciate and like, but for whatever reason, when I like watch the finished product, it 
doesn't work for me because this is essentially like the same problem i had with uh the black coat's daughter where you know i i, I watch it and I, i'm just bored while i'm watching it even though it's like you know hey I, I can tell like you know there's some beautiful looking shots here and the music's good and everything it's just you know it, it's like i don't know that he has a bunch of wonderful ingredients but yeah, once the, the pizza's finished, I'm, like, taking a bite out of it and just going, like, what the hell? <laughs> See, that's the problem here, Tim, is you're you're thinking of pizza when what he's actually making is uh, a three-course meal with, <laughs> with all, 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 you know, the finer things in life, okay? Which, I mean, could be fine, but, I mean, if I ordered a pizza, though, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> if i if i order a pizza and you give me steak tartare i'm still gonna go and throw it in the chef's face and punch the waiter like you know i i had what <laughs> <laughs> this is this is madness i like the uh i think i was gonna perk is now having seen two of his movies and i think this is even better than black coast star like this is a creator who I, I am thoroughly on board with, where now I am excited for anything he does. And the <laughs> the style of the movie really works for me. I, I There's definitely a little bit of Kubrick in there. There's a little bit of, uh, dare I say... Did I always say there's a little bit of David Lynch? Maybe a little bit of David Lynch. But I definitely feel a bit of Kubrick, especially in the shooting style and some of the way, that, just how stark some of the, some of the, the moments are. Mm-hmm. but I, I feel like this has a really strong creative voice that feels very unique and I, 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 as, as I'm watching this I'm sitting here like right from the get go this wasn't something where I realised I liked it halfway through like five minutes into this I was like I think I love this That's, like, <laughs> this was something where every, the, way it was, the way it sounded the way it looked the, the way the, the, the performances were given everything about it was clicking for me like immediately in a way that you know there's, there's so many movies that I watch where you know, it's fine until it really ramps up and it gets going. Or, like, sure. it, it, you know, it'll start off and it'll be fine and it'll interest its characters and it'll say, oh, it's doing not bad and this is interesting, that's interesting, whatever. And it's the accumulation of story, the build of the story that starts to make the characters more interesting and gets more exciting, gets more fascinating, blah, blah. But every so often there'll be movies where just the... the, the and I'm going to sound really pretentious here. Where just <laughs> the immediate like texture of of the story already engrosses me to to the point where i'm like excited about the whole thing well the experience from start to finish is this just hypnotic ride of of going through these emotions these feelings and letting the 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 director take me on a journey and that sounds like a lot of fluffy talk and i don't feel that way with most movies most movies i sit down and I see the moving parts, and I see, I see, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just, you know, I do, I do, it's just it's what it is. I, I sit down and I watch, I don't know, to, to take your pick, uh, like the latest Marvel movie, like, you know, I, I see all the parts coming together, and I, I understand how everything's functioning, but this is a movie where five minutes into it, like, I was, like, clinging to every moment, I was, I was taking it all in, and I was, I was ex- really experiencing it all, and it's one where, like, I would, ha- I would recommend you watch this in, in the dark, you watch this with a good sound system, and you, you get enveloped in it and don't let anything distract you, just be in the world with it for the 90 minutes that it is. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed the movie. <laughs> wish, wish I could say the same. It's not... Uh... I, I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to say it's, like, the worst thing I've seen in the world. Uh, I think there's, you know, certainly merits uh, to it. And, and again, the one thing, you know, that I'm agreeing with you on uh, 100% is is the, you know, the look of it. The cinematography is absolutely beautiful. I, you know, really, really uh, appreciate that. It's just, uh, unfortunately, again, I just, um, I don't know, maybe even it's a, might even be a little hard to explain. But for whatever reason, when I watch it, it just it kind of boards me you know but hey that's sometimes that happens <laughs> you know it's okay to like a movie or not like a movie there's no crime in that <laughs> i don't know what i saying there is tim I, <laughs> all i'm thinking about is when we do our top 10 of 2020 uh early next year i just i feel a fight i feel a fight coming <laughs> right now 
Oh, interesting. We shall see. <laughs> because I'll tell you right now, for me, this is a very early contender. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is an early contender. Jeez, uh, I mean, well, uh, the way the year is shaping up so far, <laughs> who knows if we'll even have 10 movies to. No, the, the, the sad news is, Tim, is that they're all going to drop like at the same time in like October because they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll start to release movies again. Like, oh shit, we've got all these horror movies for October, and we're just going to have that's all. But the first October thing where every single movie is a new release. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, uh, my boy, uh, <laughs> the New Mutants is definitely coming out in August, so I guess <laughs> that means uh, <laughs> movie theaters will be open in August for sure. Do you realize that? If that gets pushed again, and there's a good chance it will, because movie theaters might not be open in August, that mm. that will be like the, the fifth time it's been delayed. Which for a movie <laughs> is like because movies don't get delayed that often. Like video games get delayed like again sure. and again. Movies tend to stick to the dates that were given. Occasionally, you get one delay, but that's about it. New <laughs> Mutants yeah. has been banded around <laughs> so much; it's oh, it's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, we should give the spoiler warning for Gretel and Hansel. Needless to say, I thoroughly recommend it. And if you have taste, you will enjoy it, is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would still recommend it, especially if it's stuff that you're interested in. And if you like witches and fairy tales and that kind of, uh, especially if you like, you know, Black Coat's Daughter, I think you probably enjoy this. But. Here's the, well, here's the thing for me is I don't give a shit about any of that. I don't really particularly like fairy tales. <laughs> I don't particularly care about witches, uh, especially fairy tales. But for me, this is where the, 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 the art form makes the subject almost irrelevant to me. I don't really care. It's, okay. just, it's one of those things where I don't really like war movies, but every so often there's a movie that's so good that it doesn't matter that it's a war movie. It's just good enough sure. to, you know. Uh, but th this is an example for me where I don't really care about fairy tales. I mean, fairy tales is just a, a sidestep of fantasy, and I don't, I don't really like fantasy all that much. <laughs> But this, the way this is handled, the way it presents its ideas, the way it, it unfolds its ideas, it speaks to me and makes all of it feel palpable where I'm engrossed in that world and I sense all of that stuff around me. Uh, if you just do the fairy tale stuff uh, as if uh, to just take it for granted and just go, yeah, here it is. Like, I'll, I'll be bored to tears. Uh, that's, this is what made it interesting to me is how it's presented in this. So take that for what it's worth. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag Peter was right. Uh, so, full spoilers uh, from this point on. I'll thank our Patreon producers for all the months. So, thank you to David Short, Tyler Hess, Alison M. Fordyce, and Cindy Palacios. Uh, they're all patrons at $20 or above tier. You can, of course, do the same over at patreon.com slash TV. But you can, of course, support us for as much less than that. You can just give us $1 per month, and that would be greatly appreciated. And does get you a bonus episode of Streams After Midnight every single month. There's a back catalogue now of about... I don't know, 16 movies, some of that. Uh, they're exclusive over there for $1 per month. So you can access all those. $5 and up gets you early access to all the movie review episodes by one day. And you get to vote once per month on an episode. So, you know, consider all that. And if you want to support the content and keep everything coming and go and have a look. You get bonuses for other shows that you get on TV TV too. So uh, worth having a look. Uh, but that is uh, that. Is that. Uh, so full spoilers then for Gretel and Hansel from this point on. So the movie opens with the uh, the sort of the, the explanation of the, the the girl who was sick, and they took her to an enchantress. The dad took her to an enchantress. Notably, the mother's not mentioned in this story at all, and she is saved, but she gets powers. She gets like so people start coming to see her for like readings and things like that, and they don't necessarily like what she's telling them. So they eventually wanted to banish her in the woods, uh, and she actually ends up killing her father. She she makes her father like like swallow his molten like iron <laughs> like oh, yeah. they use for smithing and it, she ends up in the woods and it kind of that's kind of a prologue to the you know the idea of being oh she lures children because she had no friends so she lures children out into the woods and she grew up and uh that's that's what she is uh of course the big twist later on in the movie is that the witch isn't her the witch is actually her mother who resented her child uh for everything she did but now sort of like kill, you know lures the children in for her like so, weird mystical dead door <laughs> so the like you know when you when you first see the witch she's like this old lady but that's the disguise like the young version is the real version right yeah, yeah she she explains that she has like an old disguise to 
yeah. essentially appear more uh, like welcoming and kind because you know it's an old person. How, how much threat could an old woman be? Yeah. Kind of kind of thing. But yeah, so, I, I thought that was interesting. Like I don't know if that's a part of the you know original fairy tale or, or whatever, but I, I think that's like an interesting you know uh, wrinkle to the story that I, you know never really heard before. Or a de-wrinkling to the story, as it, oh, true. As, as it may be. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, but and uh, and I do really like the um, like the design of the witch. Like I, I like the like her when her fingers like are all black. I don't know. I just thought that was like a, a cool visual. Yeah. No, I I like uh, the the sort of the hood and the cloak she wears because even yeah. before we get to the actual house, we see when they're walking around the forest, we see like just the the figure off in the distance, like walking against mm-hmm. the smoke or whatever, and. It's always this creepy image that we're seeing, and I love the atmosphere when they're out in the woods walking because they obviously run to the huntsman first, and the huntsman gives them something to eat, uh, saves them from that weird old dude who gets up out of the bed from the oh, yeah. the little building they end up sleeping, or they try to sleep in anyway before this guy wakes up, and it's uh, you know it, 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 it gives them directions to go, go find a town of uh, foresters where they can find work. And the but they find this witch's house instead, and they're really hungry by this point. They 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 also have like a a, a mushroom trip at one point. They, oh yeah, because <laughs> they, they're getting hungry and they find these mushrooms, and then they sort of trip on them, and they have this kind of weird hallucination moment where they're kind of going from laughing to sad to you know they're going through all the emotions. But they they get I actually love where they find the house though. I love that shot of uh of Gretel looking through the the little hole in the window, like the, from the other side. You see just her eye in this triangle. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that moment. Let's see that. But they they find this big plate of food, and you know, quite quite rightly, Gretel when they, when they get invited in afterwards, because they because Hansel sneaks in, and he's and there's a great moment where it reveals the witch standing in the door frame, like behind him. I and, love that little beat. Uh, and, and Hansel's a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Um, like I I don't know if this was, a, a, again, a thing in the original story, but I always thought of the story as like they were like the same age like I, I don't know if they're supposed to be twins or uh but for for whatever reason like the original story i always uh yeah thought they were closer in age than this yeah he's like 10 or whatever because uh mm-hmm. gretel's 16 <laughs> gretel's that you know coming of age mm-hmm. kind of you know time in our life and yeah. uh but and you know so gretel tries to get in but then eventually the witch just comes out with the kid and is like hey hey he's, you know come in for food blah blah mm-hmm. And they're having food, and, you know, she quite really says he's expecting guests because she has this big table with food on it. There's a roast pig, there's, you know, there's fruit, there's dessert, there's all these things. And they end up staying there, and Gretel insists that they're going to leave the next day. But Hansel obviously wants to stay because they're getting all this food. And they're, they're, they're sort of lying in bed, and they, they can barely move because they've eaten so much, and this is, like, the best they've ever felt. This is like, oh, the promised land. It's like <laughs> heaven. And... You know, the movie kind of builds from here where there's suspicion, first of all, from from Gretel, who thinks this is all too good to be true, and that there has to be, like, a like a, what's the trade-off here? Like, why is she being so nice? Why is she giving us all this food? Where's the food coming from? Some of this food should be going bad very quickly, but it's not. It's weird. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is that what actually, like I was saying earlier, what, what, what makes Gretel tempted by the witch to stay and, like, sort of buy into this fantasy is the idea of power because Gretel recognizes that, or sorry, the witch recognizes that Gretel also has power. That she also could be a witch. That she she could access that that life force as it as it were. And she actually makes her move like a the broom with her hand. We get like a almost Jedi, you know, force power moment where she she moves yeah. the broom. And yeah, last Jedi had a broom boy. This has broom girl. Yeah, this is much better than last Jedi though. Uh, <laughs> And there's a there's a beautiful moment where she sort of like bends like the branch of a tree down to get fruit outside mm-hmm. uh, Gretel that is, and it's this wonderful moment. And it's at this point where Hansel starts getting suspicious of the witch, uh, and Gretel's like starting to buy into it. And it's I love this idea that you know everything they've talked about because even the witch says it a couple of times like oh you know if you go, go to town like you can learn to do this or that, but the the men might make use of you. They might find something else to do with you. Mm-hmm. That this the uh, this temptation of power. Uh, and buying into it is is what tempts her, it's what tempts Gretel. And of course, what breaks her out of it, of course, is that when Hansel goes missing and she realizes the witch might be behind it, that she might be the culprit, that the, the, the her, her brother's in danger, she still cares for her brother because it's brought up that because her mother kind of like, even though she was still there for until recently, she kind of like wasn't like, 
uh, present as a mother, and Gretel had to sort of fill in that role. So even though she's supposed to be the big sister who is a big sister, she has to worry all the time like her brother, like it is a child, and that's kind of like this burden to her. Uh, so it's this freedom from her responsibility and also the, the power to defend herself and the power to be uh, not scared, essentially. Uh, yeah. So I, I think it's really powerful in the sense that it's essentially taking someone who's at that point in their life, and obviously in this case it's a, a, a particular feminine uh, perspective of it, of, of, of what would tackle a teenage girl, but even just in a larger sense, of that time in your life where you have to maybe start thinking about growing up, you have to start thinking about responsibility, and someone's offering you, hey, you don't have to worry about anything. You can just be a kid forever and not care because you have this power, because you can control whatever you want. And the ultimate sort of idea of the movie is that Gretel at the end, and taking, you know, just, you know, she kills the witch, and we'll get to that in a minute, how she does that, but she t- essentially takes place of the witch and lets all the spirits of all the children that she's taken go at the end. And we have this really downbeat ending where her fingers turn black like the witches. And it ends on a somber note where she essentially says in her narration that she has to trust herself to make the right choices. This idea being that she's always going to be tempted by the corruption. She's always going to be tempted by the power because she has access to it. But she has to trust herself to make the right choices. And I think it is notable that one of the things she decides to do at the end is she sends her brother off to town on his own. It's, it's, it's almost like acknowledging, yes, this burden that was given to me uh, really shouldn't. And she makes the choice to send her brother to the foresters to go go and live his life and be that on his own. Like She has to stay here and sort of be her own thing, be her own person. Uh, so I, I don't think that's an element of it. But I, I, I do kind of like what you know, kind of seduces her into it and tempts her away because i i think it's said a lot and then the idea that she is able to break out of it because she still cares about her brother because she still wants to make those right choices um and we get some wonderful visuals as it reveals some of the witch stuff because we see her sneak down into this basement area and she sees how the food is made how, where it comes from and so there's this like this bucket of like gunk and like parts of animals and stuff and the witch comes out of this like goo puddle and turns it into the food but she's young you know she's this young girl it's the real version of the witch and this is kind of because there's a, another great scene where the witch has something to eat and then pulls out like a like a sort of clump of like a, a little girl's hair because a little bow in the end of it and this is where she finally just starts asking her questions and she's openly starts talking about what she is and who what Grell's becoming and why she should give into it and and, and all, all these things uh and she, you know, she she actually tries to prepare her younger brother in the oven in front of her in this basement area, and it's only because she has the, you know, Gretel has the power now that she impales her with a, a staff or something down there, uh, to the wall. It's, it's this, it's this big sort of moment. Is it's actually really impressive how it handles these, uh, these beats, in a, in a way that still feels art house, but yet it's still kind of exciting and like visual effecty. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will say I, I did like the end uh, quite a bit, actually. And uh, I, I think the um, yeah, a, a big thing was, yeah, like just how cool it looked, like the visuals, like it's um, because it, it's not like, I, I guess, what I would normally think of it uh, as like an oven. I It seemed it was kind of like a like a graded thing on the floor and it was like all these um, all this like blue flame, like shooting up from mm. it and um. Yeah, like when she impales her with the whatever it was, like kind of almost looked like a giant fork or something. Maybe, or... maybe a, f- a flame grill is more of an accurate description than an oven, but <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like when it impales her and then she's just like engulfed in blue fire. Uh, I, I, I love that. Like I thought that looked so cool. And um, and yeah, and going back to what you're saying, like about the food and stuff. Um, another like interesting update uh because like with the original story what what i uh think or at least what i know from like pop culture is that i think it's supposed to be like the actual house is made of food like it's a giant like gingerbread mm. house so like you're the children when they come across it they start eating the walls and stuff and um which yeah would <laughs> would look like very silly in this but um yeah cool idea to take um what I thought, like, yeah, it is, like, a bunch of different gunk and stuff, and but I, I thought that it looked like there was, like, a lot of, like, dead bodies or at least it, some, like, meat yeah, or something I, in there. It looked like brains and, like, like livers yeah. of, like, uh, maybe other kids, maybe animals. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, hard to tell. Well, 
Well, I, I assume that like all those spirits at the end were other kids that yeah. she would have eaten at some point, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so <laughs> no, I, I liked that. I, I remember like the first time she walks down into the basement. The synth music is very like memorable in my mind. I like. I, I think one of the, the hardest things about talking about a movie like this is that so much of it is just how beautiful and stunning and the editing, even like mm. all of the technical qualities. Uh, and and we start about technical qualities. It sounds almost like you're talking about the boring stuff, but it really isn't in this movie. The the visuals are so stunning that it, like no, this this is the the artistic, like you know the brush strokes of the camera. <laughs> it's just wonderful stuff. And <clears throat> when she she goes down to the basement, we get all this stuff that's a bit more otherworldly. It gets a bit more supernatural, I suppose, down there. Uh, all mm-hmm. of that stuff is is just so. <sighs> striking like it really sticks mm. out because the because the camera is typically it, it, i mean it's been very beautiful but because it's very static a lot of the time and because it's these very kind of simple shots it's very striking when you start introducing these like supernatural elements into the frame without treating it any differently and it really feels like it's another other world of presence down there because even this basement area we, we say basement so you're probably if you're not watching the movie you're thinking of this dark you know typical basement no no it's this bright white room yeah. it's this like almost science right. fiction looking room it is it, it's very like sparse like you know there isn't really a lot there it's like just kind of yeah big empty rooms with very high ceilings uh which I, i'm assuming you're probably uh <laughs> that's probably in part with the aspect ratio you're talking about maybe yeah uh, yeah I guess maybe part of that is to make the world feel taller than the kids, to make them feel small in it, to make them feel like they're helpless oh, yeah, yeah. and they, and they need someone's help, and to make her feel, you know, Gretel to feel like she's helpless and needs help. And I hope the whole point of this movie is for her to get to the point where no, she can help herself. She doesn't need someone else to help her. Uh, mm-hmm. That's very much the the, the story. Uh, so no, I I love I you know I, I loved all this. Uh, the is this is it's one of those things it's very ethereal it's just very much about being in the in the scenes but everything's so immaculately directed that there was never a second where i wasn't completely engaged which is why it's a shame i mean i keep joking and calling, <laughs> and calling you an idiot and whatever else but it's honestly a shame to me that you did not feel that that you just felt bored because this is easily one of the more engrossing times i've had with a movie uh recently interesting and I do kind of like I wonder if I would like it more as like a comic book or something because um yeah like the uh, again the uh so much of the visual stuff uh I, I I like so much and I wonder maybe if yeah I would enjoy like looking at it on a on a page more than watching it as like moving pictures or something but I don't know like you know I, I'm joking around with you you know as well like I'm not uh again i'm not trying to say like this movie sucked or like i don't get it what's the big deal like you know i'm not doing any of that it's like uh it's again it's just something where uh i i can see uh whether there are these very interesting and talented moving parts to it but i mean you know i'm not gonna lie yeah i'm being honest when i say that you know uh when i watched it i i don't know i just felt like a little disconnected and a little bored um by a lot of it like I, I, again there were definitely freaky scenes that i liked like again i, I like the ending and um yeah you're talking about those like freaky parts when she uh I, I honestly i don't know if some of these were nightmares or if they were actually happening like there's uh, i mean there's this yeah there's kind of a mix of things because what once they're at the house and they, they spend the night there she starts having nightmares of like what's really going on so it is kind of confusing i, I think maybe the idea <laughs> is that because she does have power inside her that she's she's dreaming it but the, what she's dreaming is real mm-hmm. stuff like she's having like visions of the reality yeah i guess okay. is how i would describe it uh, but there is some like some cool freaky stuff there like oh i don't know maybe almost silent hill-esque uh mm-hmm. maybe in terms of like i don't know <laughs> i can't think of a better word other than like freakiness <laughs> uh to describe it but it, it is like a weird unusual kind of uh, thing that you don't see often in uh you know like like horror movies <laughs> you know uh, definitely better than like the generic cgi ghost of just like you know like a, an old lady with an outstretched jaw or something <laughs> Uh, oh yeah it never but, does anything like that this yeah. is a very restrained movie and that it knows what lines not to cross yeah so i i, I really appreciate that uh no i i, I kind of like honestly <laughs> i i i definitely thoroughly recommend this and i feel like 
you know, maybe, maybe you'll come down on Tim's side where you, you don't think it's, it's interesting <laughs> enough, but I... I think it's at least worth it, worth checking out for the... Uh, at, at least, like, you know, some of the cinematography and, like, images. And, and like you said, like, the music, too, was, like, really good. Like, all those moving parts, I at least think are good at, uh, on their own. So I... I, I wouldn't dissuade people from checking it out. It's just, uh, it's unfortunate that it didn't really work out uh, for me as much as I would have hoped. If, if you like stuff, if you like movies that are, you know, full on atmosphere, that are really well done tone pieces where you, you feel engrossed in the world, I I would recommend this. I, I think this is like an exceptional piece of direction. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess we're getting to the ratings now. I mean, because it is a really straightforward story for the most part. It is a lot of yeah. it is in the execution and the the visuals and i'm sure this is this is one where i could probably go through like shot by shot and kind of like talk about what the why the camera's doing what it's doing and how it makes each scene feel and all the rest of it but it's kind of hard to do that without the visual aid and it's kind of hard to do that on a podcast so uh, i will yeah. say i'm without watching it like four more times <laughs> but i will say oh, really? <laughs> that uh well you I mean, said I, you watched it four times or you will watch it no, I'm saying it's difficult to do that without watching it a bunch of times is what, oh, what I mean. Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought you yeah. said you already watched it four no, times. No, no, I was no, like, no. wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I literally finished this like minutes before we started recording okay. today, Tim. Uh, but I, no, I was super into this. It's one of these things like, you know, some weeks me and Tim will watch like two really shitty movies to record on a Sunday. <laughs> and th- this week was definitely not that at all. Where I mean, I like this more than the other movie we did. I won't say what the other one was because it... it you know, depending on when these go out, they might be separated and whatever, but it wasn't a bad week for watching horror movies, even if Tim didn't <laughs> like like it. Surely, surely you mean, appreciate this more than some of the, the, the trash that we often have to suffer. Yeah, no, 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 totally, totally. Yeah. I, I mean, like, again, I don't have much to complain about other than the fact that I was bored, but it's a different, it's a different kind of being bored than when we watch something that's like generic you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. it's like it's a like sometimes i I might feel bored or disconnected from something um but in in a different way than i am like saying watching like uh you know (laughs) like the uh fifth saw movie or something like (laughs) you know like the uh uh, what was that movie with the the possessed kid last year oh god uh, which one i feel like <laughs> there's probably there's probably a ton like the, the prodigy or something the or... prodigy that's what i was thinking yeah. of yeah, yeah that was the yeah one. like something like something like that is boring but in a more tedious like pull your hair out kind of way uh well this it's like yeah maybe it didn't work for me but uh and and i, I was bored with some stuff but like I don't know, at least it is more interesting and like I can look at it and appreciate more things than you know yeah uh, and other movies this so. is the type of movie by the way that up why I'm upset when other movies look like shit because this movie is five million dollars to me this was a low budget movie and oh, wow. it, it looks better than most movies that come out and you get so many yeah. of these VOD movies that come out and they look like shit and this is just something as simple as having a talented cinematographer with a talented mm-hmm. director and knowing how to make something look good so mm. you know the next time i watch some crappy vod thing that looks like it was shot on video with bright lights and nothing has any style to it i'm you know that's, that's isn't exactly why i complain because it's totally possible it's not a money issue uh sure. it's just a skill issue so uh, mm. there we go not that everything has to look like this movie it have different styles right. have different looks uh just don't look bad. <laughs> that's all. I'm, that's all I'm asking. Totally. <laughs> don't look bad. Uh, all right, Tim. What are you going to rate Gretel and Hansel? <clears throat> um, I. So, I mean, I I don't hate it. Um. So like, I'm not gonna give it like a super low score. Um. But again, uh, unfortunately, I can't say I love it. So I'm, I'm not gonna go super high either. Um. I I think I'll, I'll give it a, a six, uh, which to me it, it's it's just like okay, and I mean I, I can't go too low because again I, I can't deny, um, you know the skills uh in, in a lot of the stuff that made it like the cinematography, the music, um, the, the acting, you know like everyone does like a great job, so like I can't go you know super low on it again, uh like the only really com- complaint I have is just like a you know there were parts of it that bored me uh i I shouldn't say the whole movie bored me maybe that's a a bit too much because there were definitely 
instances where I perked up and I was like, ooh, this is cool. Like, oh, I like, you know, this. And oh, it's starting to get freaky. But then uh, I feel like that was just like, I don't know, like Tim, conversations feel, and stuff. <laughs> I feel like you're not allowed to say anything perked you up when you're talking about a movie directed by Oz Perkins. Oz right? Perkins. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, it's banned. It's, like, it's not allowed. <laughs> All right, fair. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I'll still be giving it a somewhat okay score. So I'll, I'll go with the six. Um, I, I wish I liked it better. I, I, again, I like uh, I I feel like I've heard a lot of people really like um, you know, uh, Perkins stuff, and I wish it worked a little a little better for me. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he's two for two with movies which I I'm not that into. I won't say I hate, but I'll just say not that into. Yeah. Alternatively, I'm two for two now with movies that I really like, and I think this is even better than Black Coast Star. Uh, so I'm going to jump straight in here with a solid nine out of ten. Uh, wow. This was wonderful. And this felt special immediately to me, and I never had that feeling go away the entire time. It was tight, and you knew what it was doing, and you knew what it wanted it to be. Uh, I you know, all the things you meant, obviously all the technical qualities. We never really mentioned about the uh, the production design. Not there's a lot to design in it because mm-hmm. a lot of it's in a forest, but the house looks good. I like how it feels. I like the the basement. I like all these d- different elements. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lo- I love just kind of how off kilter the 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 dialogue is in some places where they'll they'll you know like they they don't just have the kids sound natural. They they do kind of sound like they're in a story a little bit sometimes. In a way that feels very intentional, in a way that feels like it's trying to create a very specific uh, sort of cadence, I suppose is the word I'd use. So, no, I, I, I loved it. Uh, 9 out of 10 from me. When did you say this came out again? This year. This is a January 2020 film. Okay. I just, <laughs> just going to make note of that any time we watch a trailer and you're like, oh, this is the typical January dump movie. I'm like, what? <laughs> There's exceptions. There's exceptions. <laughs> and it's only just it's January thirty first. This is like the, the 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 latest it could possibly have been in January. <laughs> just FYI. So yeah. I love it. I highly recommend it. Uh Tim's not saw on it, but hey, we do we do. Uh there's no accounting for taste. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 all right uh that has been gretel and hansel you can let us know what you think of the movie if you've seen it in the comments below uh you can like and subscribe liking is really important on youtube it lets the algorithm know that you you think we're worth watching and other people who are interested in horror movies and similar podcast content will uh, can check us out so please do like uh, you can support us via uh via your monies at patreon.com slash tv <laughs> For as little as a dollar per month, as I said earlier, uh, that's also obviously a huge help, and every every dollar is greatly appreciated. Uh, you can, of course, get us on Twitter at Screams Midnight for uh, channel updates and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, check out all the content from Mailfuzz TV, uh, a bunch of TV reviews, do old Star Trek reviews, uh, the Sci Fi Movie Podcast, the Atomic Cinema Experiment. All these things are worth finding on the Mailfuzz TV YouTube page, or of course, uh, individual podcast feeds for a lot of that stuff too. Uh, all that's listed on the Patreon page should you wish to find any of those. Uh, but that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we will see you next time. <laughs>